this video, I'm going to show you how to use custom node naming inside of Copilot Studio and why that's important. Okay, so we're in Copilot Studio and many of you guys may not know about this really new cool feature that was added into Copilot Studio, but I want to showcase this for you because I really think it's cool and I think it's really going to help uh, makers or people who create Copilots be able to share their projects and make them much more effective as we go forward. So you'll see here, I'm in Copilot Studio. I've made myself this recipe and food assistant scenario. And one of the things that I made is I made it so that um, I can come in and I can actually come into this. And I can ask questions about, uh, you know, do you have any vegan recipes? and stuff like this, and it's gonna go out and it's gonna use the generative answers or the knowledge uh, sets to go get answers and show me some different vegan recipes and all of that. But imagine if I wanted to say something like, I wanna order a pizza. And, and when I say order a pizza, what you're gonna do is you're gonna see it ask me a question about if I'm vegetarian and all of these different things. And so what I've really done, and I'm not gonna go through the whole demo of this because it's not really that important. It's more that I wanted you to see that there is a custom topic that's been authored in this. So, and in that custom topic, it's basically this order pizza topic. Now, I'm gonna minimize the test screen here so that we can see this. And I'm gonna zoom out a bit for you to see that there's a bunch of different logic that's happening inside of this Copilot Studio implementation. And, and you could have much more complex logic than what you're seeing here, but I wanted you to kind of get a perspective of what all might be going on whenever I go and I build this. And so let's zoom back in a little bit and let's take a look at what all this thing is actually doing as part of this topic. Well, we'll start here and we'll look down and you'll see here there's a question and then it asked if I'm veg uh, a vegetarian, uh, and then based upon that logic, it decides whether it's gonna give me choices of meat toppings. Uh, if not, if you say yes, you're a vegetarian, then it's going to ask you about vegetable toppings. Then we'll go in and we'll say, what crust type would you like? You'll answer. Let's say that you said it was pan. I need to inform you that there's a $2 upcharge for that. Make sure that you're okay with that. If you're, not, if you're not okay with that, I need to go back and ask you to reselect the crust to a different crust. Otherwise, I'll keep going and then I'll ask you how many pizzas you have and then I'll give you a confirmation. Now this, I understand it because I wrote it. So, and if you started going to the top and you start looking at this, so let's go all the way back to the top. And if you haven't noticed, there's been a lot of performance enhancements into the authoring canvas guys. And that is something that I'm really happy to see. But let's just say right here, this is a question node. Now you can actually rename the question nodes or the nodes within this. So you can say, um, determine a vegetarian and now I have basically this and I can say, uh, you know, uh, if not vegetarian, and I can, if I misspell vegetarian, forgive me. Then you can see here, it goes here and then say uh, meat, or meat toppings. I can come in here and change this one. I can go veg toppings. I can come down to the question here and go, uh, you know, crust selection. And then we can come in here and we can say, uh, you know, if pan uh, selected, so that way people know, and then I can say pan up charge confirmation. Uh, if pan up charge uh, is negative, what to do? 
Then we have the question node here, how many and then we have confirmation. So now when we look at this as someone who's picking this up, who's, who's going to try to learn this with me, it's so much easier to understand what actually is going on. I can very quickly come in here and go, oh, I'm determining if it's vegetarian. And you can imagine some of these things are long. Like here, you can't really see what all it's uh, asking potentially. And you can see here, oh, if it's not vegetarian, then it's going to come over here to meat toppings. And then uh, and then it's here's vegetarian toppings and crust selection and things of that nature. And if if pan selected, here's the pan upcharge confirmation. Right. And you can see here like it's it. I would have to come in here and read this to understand what it's doing if I'd never actually worked on this before. But now I've got all these good descriptions that are in here. So a lot of people are going to say, well, wait a minute, you did all that. And I'm going to hit save here just so that we can save the changes that we've done. But I want to show you also in the code behind in the actual YAML, what's going on with this. So if you'll go into the code editor now, you're going to see that we'll have a question node here. It's got an ID. But you can see now we've got this new capability here that's called display name. And so when we're making all of these changes, it still knows that it's a question type. We just added an additional uh, aspect of the YAML to make it where you can change the display name. And if we wanted to, you can you could modify it in the YAML if you'd like and be able to save it. And you would see it reflected inside of the UX as well. But this is just, again, some of the cool new capabilities that are coming into Copilot Studio to make it more developer and uh, team collaborative friendly whenever you're building your Copilots. So I hope you guys like this video. And if you want to get more videos like this about Copilot Studio and how to learn about it, please like and subscribe to my channel so you can be aware of any of the new videos that I release. Also, if you want to try out Copilot Studio, you can do it at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.